What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, back with another video, back with a very special guest. Steffi Cohen is in the building. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Well, I'm doing all right. I don't have a four times body weight <laughs> deadlift, so I guess I'm doing only okay. Uh, for those that don't know, you are the first female to have a four times body weight deadlift, right? Yep, correct. And what was uh, the amount? Like, what was the body weight and what was the deadlift? Yeah, so at Rework Record Breakers, I deadlifted 495 pounds at 123. Yeah. Weight. And then also in the gym you did 525. 525, yeah. And as we know, care. the limit does not exist. Like it does what, not exist. when is 600 pounds coming up? I uh, hopefully pretty soon. Hopefully pretty soon. I like it. I like <laughs> it. I was going to say so some people take a look at you maybe at uh, the lifting and they'll say like oh like you're just a freak like you're just like built to lift. But what they don't know is actually you've studied lifting, uh, taken the time to kind of look at the mechanics, the movements, how things work and it's much more methodical than people probably think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so uh, for you, I think it would then make sense to take a look at the best, what you do when it comes to your deadlift, and do a tutorial. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that people might not know when it comes to the sumo deadlift or how you deadlift mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, they just think, oh, you just lift the, like you're just built to do it? Yeah, so the tips that I'm going to discuss in this video are hopefully tips that will help you also improve in your sumo deadlift. Um, these are just my, based on my experience and based on uh, what I've studied in school and physical therapy and what I've learned from watching and talking to other experienced lifters. Absolutely. So without further ado, let's get right into the actual tutorial. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the sumo deadlift because it's kind of like my specialty. Um, I'm going to walk you through the proper way to set up in the deadlift. Um, then we'll talk about the proper execution of the deadlift and finally talk about some common mistakes that people make when they're deadlifting. All right, so the first thing we're going to address is the stance or the width of your feet. So you essentially want to pick a stance that is comfortable to you. Guys are going to be a lot more limited in their adductor flexibility than girls. Girls can get away with being able to put their, their feet a lot more further apart. So essentially, for me, I usually try to pick a, a point in the bar to always put my feet in the same exact position. That way I'm not like uncomfortable during competitions or during max attempts. I know exactly wh where my feet are going to go. Second thing to look at is the, the angle of your feet. So ideally you want to have them in a 45 degree angle or pointing out onto the plates, okay? That position is basically going to allow you to keep your tibia perpendicular to the ground. So that's really important because in any type of barbell movement, you always want to move around the bar and not the other way around. So whether you're doing a clean, a snatch, or a sumo deadlift, you're always moving around the bar and not letting the bar go around you. Okay? So when, I do, when I'm doing a sumo deadlift, it's the same thing. Knees are out of the way, tibia is perpendicular with the ground. So you wanna start with your chest in line with the bar, just like so. And treat the sumo deadlift like a sumo deadlift. So something that people usually do is they start with their chest on top of the bar, you would just want to always keep it kind of in line. The next thing is the position of your shoulders, always in line with your wrists. So it kind of goes hand in hand with the position of your chest. So you want chest, arms and wrists all in the same position. Next thing we're going to talk about is the execution of the sumo deadlift. So the main thing that I want you guys to take away from this is the position of your butt. So one thing that I get commonly asked is, where should my butt begin? Like what is the, where should I put my butt when I'm starting the deadlift? And one thing that I saw Chris Duffin do in one of his videos that I really, really like and that I teach my athletes how to do is finding that position. So what you wanna do, maybe not with one plate, but something like 60% or 70% of your one rep max. If you pull and from the top, you do a really slow descent deadlift, Wherever your butt ends, that's your starting position of your deadlift. Not any higher, not any lower. So people get really caught up on, you know, the textbook starting position of a deadlift, but it's really gonna vary ba based on your proportions. The second thing is, what, do your, what does your hip need to be doing during the deadlift? And that's really important. The way I see it is your butt should be the fulcrum from which your, the rest of your body moves. So it's like, um, what's that thing called? that you pull cars up, oh, a jack. it's like a jack, exactly. And your butt is that jack. Like you want it to start in a position and then kind of like bring it down 
in parallel to the car coming up. So the car is the bar and your butt is the fulcrum. So that's, that's how I think about it. So as you're pulling, you want to think about your butt kind of going down at the same time that your hands are going up. Because doing that in any other order is going to result in either your chest dropping or you being cut kind of like in the middle with the bar way too far in front of you. That's also going to give you a lot more power from the hips and from your legs if you can focus on kind of like pushing down into the ground with your hips and your butt and your thighs and your quads. It's a lot more stronger than if you try to pull from your back. So when, you're, when we're talking about the initial starting position of the deadlift, you want to, personally, I prefer a more static start rather than a dynamic start. So, for example, Dr. Deadlift, Kyler Woodlam, does a dynamic start and he's very, very powerful right off the ground. Versus when you see me pulling, I'm very, very slow off the ground. It takes like, it feels like a minute, but it takes like five to seven seconds for me to actually pull the, the bar off the floor. So it's really important if you are a slow puller or if, if it takes a while for you to bring the bar off the ground that you think about kind of like slowly activating your, the muscles in your legs one by one. So when I'm, when I'm pulling, I think about almost like a leg press into the ground. You know, I think about really, really pushing my legs, driving them into the ground and really, really slowly building that momentum to pick up the bar off the ground. If you see any of my heavy, heavy deadlifts, it seems like it's never going to come off the ground. But as that kind of like tension builds up in my legs, one plate starts coming up, two, three, four. And the reason why I like to think about it that way is because the starting position of any lift, it could be either your bench, your squat, or your deadlift, is like, I think about an analogy of shooting a bow and an arrow. Um, if you're sloppy and out of, out of control when you're shooting, the arrow is not going to go exactly where you want it. But if you do a slow squat descent that you know exactly where your hips are going and where your shoulders are, or in the deadlift, you know exactly like where your shoulders are, where your hips are, or in a bench, you lower that bar, bar with control, you, there's a lot bigger chance of you putting that bar in the right position in the concentric part of the lift or in the push or pull portion. So a little wrap up of how I like to do the sumo deadlift, where you pick a point in the barbell where you always are gonna put your feet in. Try to keep that stance uh, consistent throughout all of your reps and in competition. Your feet should be pointed 45 degrees out or pointing towards the plates. Pick a position for your hands that just feels natural. I usually like to grab onto the, the gnarling right there. The position for your tibia should be perpendicular to the ground. Your butt should be, to pick that position, lower slowly into the ground so you can know where that position lies. And then from there, think about pulling your butt down as your chest comes up. That's basically going to avoid you missing deadlifts at the knee or the load staying too far in front of you. Then as far as the starting technique goes, um, I like to teach all my athletes, athletes that do sumo deadlifting, to have a more static start so that they can build up momentum and tension in their legs before they start pulling. All right, so how do you know whether you should be pulling sumo or conventional? There's a lot of things that go into picking the right uh, deadlift style, but some of the things to take into account are your body proportions and your natural muscle fiber um, distribution. Those are things that obviously you can't alter, which is why it's important that you get out of your comfort zone and experiment with different styles of deadlifting. I hear a lot of people say that um, it, it, one of the things that determines whether or not you're, you're going to pull sumo or conventional is your proportions, but you can't just base it on your proportion compared to someone else. You need to directly um, measure it as a proportion of your height. So this is um, an article that I saw actually on Brett Contreras' website where he posted this chart that allows you to figure out whether sumo or conventional is the best style for you. So what you have to do is you measure your arm, the, your arm length from the tip of your finger until the top of your acromion. Then you measure your torso height from the top of your head to your ASIS, which is the top of your iliac crest or your hip. 
and then you also measure your height against the wall, preferably from the top of your head until the bottom of your ankle. Then what you need to do is you take the arm length and divide it by your height, and you take the torso length and divide it by your height, and based on those numbers, just pick from that chart. So one of the most controversial topics in the deadlifting world is whether or not sumo deadlifting is cheating or not. So like I said, there's a lot of factors that play a role into which deadlifting style you're gonna pick or you're better at based on the biomechanical advantage of your muscles and your body proportions and your muscle strength in different areas. So saying that I'm obviously biased because I choose to pull sumo, but saying that pulling sumo is cheating is one of the most ignorant and uneducated things someone can say, especially because it's a deadlifting style that is approved in competition. So therefore, there is a standard, there is a reason why people are allowed to pull sumo in competition. The next argument is, if you ask around in a room of 100 people, I bet you that, that 100 people that lift, I bet you that a, those 100 people are not gonna agree that sumo is easier for them. Like it's a completely, uh, it's completely preference based. And the next argument is, um, if there's a lot of world record deadlifts that have been broken in the past using a conventional style, why do you think they didn't do it in a sumo stance if it's easier or if they could pull more weight, right? And finally, the argument, I wanna address the argument that pulling sumo is easier because it's less range of motion. While that is true and there is less range of motion involved in a sumo pull versus a conventional for the most part, um, I read a study recently that indicated that if we base that on the energy demands of your muscles, your muscles, when you're doing a, any exercise that is from anywhere from five to 15 seconds long, we're relying on your, your creatine, kinase, creatine kinase stores and your glycogen stores, and you have more than enough glycogen stores and creatine kinase to push through a 10, 15 second long sumo pull. So in that regard, it's pretty much the same. Well, guys, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, make sure to like the damn video. Steffi, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram, at Steffi Cohen. Yeah, and we'll, we'll link that all in the description. And who is this beautiful man right here? I'm Hayden Bow. I'm the other uh, co-owner of Hybrid Performance Method. Um, for those of you who don't know what Hybrid Performance Method is, it's basically your one-stop shop for online programming. We do everything from gymnastics to Olympic weightlifting to powerlifting. Get your first uh, handstand and pull-up, deadlift only. We have all the individual lift programs, so uh, definitely check us out. Um, you can find us at Hybrid Performance Method on Instagram uh, or me personally at Hayden.bo. Yeah, so we're uh, going to link everything in the description. So these are some of the tips that you apply with your athletes. Uh, like I said, if you guys want to see more content featuring the hybrid team, make sure to like the damn video and leave a comment below. And we'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace!